Hello. Now, in this presentation, what we are going to do is we are going to look at machine learning with R, and we're using the carrot package. Okay. And what we're going to do is look at the k nearest neighbor uh, technique. Okay. Now, I'm going to sort of simplify things quite a bit in this. Uh, first off, k nearest neighbor is a very nice little idea, and it is about trying to sort of figure out. Who are the nearest neighbors essentially, and who is, um, like based on like Euclidean distances and so on? So there's metrics such as the Euclidean distance. There's other ones as well, actually, but there's a, uh, it's actually a nice, simple idea, but it doesn't actually lend itself to being explained in this sort of format. Okay, so Euclidean distance. Now that's just one of many, but once you find the Euclidean distance, you'd be able to sort of figure out the other ones, like the city block distance and so on. Now, the carrot package. So what I'm going to do is load up the carrot package, and I'm going to load up some other packages there as well, such as dplyr and mass, just uh, just to sort of help us out here. Okay. Now, I'm just going to run it again just to get rid of that, um, uh, get rid of that, warning there so now what I'm going to do is use the iris data set I'm not being very imaginative here and also I'm actually just going to ha treat the whole data set as a training data set so if you're not familiar with that essentially what you would do normally is split a data set into a training data set and a testing data set but for the sake of simplicity I'm just going to treat the whole thing as a training data set but that is actually worth finding out about after the, this, uh, like how to create a data partition with Carrot. So you can uh, fit a model with a training data set and then test it out with the testing data set. Okay. So if you're, in case you're not familiar with uh, Iris, I'll just have a quick look at it here. Essentially what we have here is a four numeric variables, uh, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. And what we have here is, uh, at the end here, is a category. Now, what happens here is there's actually three of these categories. Okay. I'm just going to amend this shortly, or sh uh, quickly. Oops. To say that this last column here, now that's only 6 out of 150, that there is 50 Setosa, 50 Versicolor, 50 Virginica. And essentially what we are trying to do is use the uh, categorical variables, or sorry, the numeric variables, which I took out and really I should put back in, just here, just to have a look at them, uh, to sort of figure out which, can we predict which of those uh, species types, can we predict them from these four categorical variables, uh, numeric variables, okay? So we're going to try out the carrot package, okay? And we are going to try out k nearest neighbor and so on. So what I have to do actually first off is I have to set up my uh, features or my uh, predictor variables. And I'm going to pick out the first four columns there, columns one to four. Okay, they are all the numeric variables. And the classes or the targets is the, is the, um, the species there. Okay, so let's just have a look at that. Glimpse, this is from dplyr, just have a quick look at that there, 150 cases, grand, four variables, dbl means double, they're all numeric, that's grand, grand. Okay, and then same again for training classes, which is our targets, a factor with three levels, that's to say it's a categorical variable with three different categories, okay. So that's good. So what we're going to do here now is actually try out Kinius Neighbor, okay. That's actually a very simple setup, okay. So first off, I'm actually going to take a very simplistic approach here. Uh, we have library carrot already installed. Okay, so what we have to do here is say train. Okay, the predictor variables, which are the are the features. Okay, the uh, targets are the response variables, or the response, or the outcomes, or the categories. Okay, simply x and y. And also, what we do is put in the method here. Okay. Now, I'm being a little bit oversimplistic because there's additional things you put in here, and that's what you really have to learn when you're learning about machine learning, everything else that goes in after KNN. 
Uh, but actually, just actually, just let's uh, get this out of the way first. Okay, so let's run that model. There we go. And let's see how good it was at predicting. Yeah, it seemed to be pretty good there. Now, I mean, um, in general. Now, that's the sort of, you would sort of argue that this is all the training data. So how would it get on against testing data? A little bit beyond that. But essentially, happy enough, really. Okay. Now, you have to validate it a bit more. Okay. Now, so this is like what, like the stuff you really need to know. Okay, because really actually fitting the actual, this part was actually quite easy. Okay, this stuff down here is all the things you have to sort of learn and pick up. Okay, uh, for example, so I'm only picking out two things here, the pre-processing. Okay, and just this thing about train control. Okay, I'll really actually focus only on the pre-processing here. Okay, so it says pre-process equals center scale. Okay. So, well, actually, so what does that mean, okay? So, I'm going to just do something slightly similar here, uh, or uh, based around that, okay? And essentially what I'm going to do here is pre-process the data, and what I'm going to do is center it and scale it, okay? Now, if you're familiar with undergraduate statistics or college or anything like that, it's essentially what you're doing is calculating the z-scores or something, and so on. Centering really means to divide by the mean, sorry, subtract from the mean, okay? So mean centering, okay? So whatever the value is, is transformed into the value minus the mean, okay? And scale is essentially uh, divide by the standard deviation. So it's essentially the z-score, okay? So pre-process uh, the training data when we're going to center it and scale it, okay? So this does not actually uh, carry out uh, the, um, this command does not actually carry it out. What it does is just sort of sets up the information or sets up, it's a sort of more so it saves the set of instructions of what is to be done, okay? But if you want to have a look at how that would work, you can actually just use the predict object there, the predict function, and as if that is a model and then use the training data just to see what happens, and there we are. What that does is gives the transform values. So in this KNN fit one, rather than working with the raw data, it actually works with these transformed values. Okay, so it actually fit our model with that. Okay, let's see how it actually gets on. Actually, I just have it done up here. Let's fit it there. Give that a second. Same, pretty much the same again. Like I mean, this is very much a toy data set, so it's not. Let's not read too much into it, but you know, still quite good. Okay. Uh, now, so that's actually, as I sort of said, that's the important stuff actually about how to, what to do, and when to do it. Okay. So, just to sort of give a counter example here, I'm putting in two different options here. Uh, so if, rather than putting in the center. What I'm going to do is put in the range, and the range essentially express every number between the minimum and the maximum as some value between the minimum and the maximum, and so on. So, and then the boot is just actually a different option there. That's about resampling, which is actually quite interesting. Okay, so let's run that. See how we get on. We should get something similar there. Little bit different results. Nothing. Don't read into it too much. Again, this is a very simple data set. Uh, neural networks, I actually just have it there. I'll just run it there, just to sort of say, uh, the only thing I actually really need to remark upon here, as far as I'm concerned, is we actually can change KNN to NNet, okay? But, again, this is the stuff that you really need to learn, all this stuff. The actual, this part here is much of a much, is, you know, you can actually get the hang of that pretty quickly. Okay, just remember what uh, what to do, neural nets or KNN, but all of these things down here, this is what you really should be learning. Okay, that's um, KNN with uh, carrot.